right, guys, grace and peace. Man, I am so excited for today's show. Man, as you see, I have Mr. Timothy Brindle himself. Man, how you doing, brother? I'm blessed by the best. Amen. <laughs> I'm doing great. Good to be with you, Chris. Yes, sir. So um, for those who may have not heard of you, who do not know of you, uh, tell, the, tell the people who you are and where they can find you. Yeah, so... I am a sinner saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord um, has put his Holy Spirit in me, given me a desire to proclaim Christ crucified and resurrected. Uh, I seek to do that from, a, from the pulpit. I seek to do that in my living room with my wife and eight children. I seek to do that through hip-hop. I seek to do that um, with the pen, in writing, um, in, in blogging, uh, and in doing enjoyable uh, edifying podcasts like this with you, brother Chris. And so you can find me on Timothy Brindle ministries.com where you can find, um, my albums, um, my writings, sermons, uh, podcasts like this tonight, Chris, I'd love to put it up there. Yep. Uh, once we're done, um, and, and several blogs that I have written and my wife has written. And, um, I was joking with her the other night. She's basically starting to beat me <laughs> in, and the amount of blog she's written, she's starting to, she's catching up is about to pass me up as she yeah. writes a lot of very edifying things for all of God's people in particular. She has a heart for women, mm. um, to, to help them know Christ and all of scripture mm. and really apply biblical theology, the understanding that God has one story of salvation Really apply that for ladies, yeah, um, wow. as well. So, um, wow, yeah, man. Thanks for asking. Chris. Amen, amen. So, man, let's get right into it, man. Um, so, I've I've seen you over the last few months, man. You've you you become more outspoken against uh, critical race theory, and we'll we'll get more into critical race theory in a second. But what 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 made you even speak out against critical race theory in the first place? Yes. So, um, just to sort of define critical race theory for a, any of our listeners that mm -hmm. aren't familiar. Is that okay, Chris? Oh, to, absolutely. Go to, ahead, brother. To, yeah. So critical race theory uh, um, is a philosophy. Uh, it's an ideology. Uh, and it's one of many critical theories. Uh, and the critical theories are critical of injustice uh, and oppression in society. Mm -hmm. Um they are, the critical theories observe the power uh, abuse um, that, that exists or sometimes don't really exist in societies. Um, and oftentimes they take uh, instances of real oppression. For instance, men in, in their sinfulness have oppressed women at times in the world, in, in global history, and, and in America – um, but a, but a critical theory that focuses on gender will really begin to see all male female relationships through the lens of that oppression, mm -hmm. uh, and and look skeptically at at men as oppressors. Period. Uh, and and look at women as the oppressed. Um, likewise, there's instances where um, non homosexual people have been abusive to to homosexual people or discriminated against them. And so they will attempt to paint a narrative that all homosexuals are oppressed by non-homosexuals. And then they do the same with race. Mm -hmm. uh, critical race theory takes the fact that there has been real racism in the world uh, and there has been real structural systemic racism in America's history in which there was discrimination embedded in laws in which uh, African Americans in particular – uh, were treated as subhuman, uh, and then as uh, you know, and then after the abolition of slavery, even less than full citizens. Um, and so, what it'll do is it'll take that true history, and then it'll overlay it into the present, right. and it'll especially make use of instances like Michael Brown being shot by a, a white police officer in, in 2012, or George Floyd being killed by a white police officer or um, looking at statistics and seeing, wow, how come African-Americans make less money and, and have less academic or educational success than white people? 
oh, it's systemic racism. Right. And so what they like to do, the critical race the- theorists, is take uh, real racism from the past and overlay it into the present. Right. And critical race theory, Chris, really takes advantage of white guilt. Mm-hmm. Once they can um, get a white person to admit not only that racism has existed um, in significant ways um, and, and in problematic ways, uh, that they're just going to keep pressing it and keep pressing it. And they'll abuse uh, – I'm speaking strongly here – they'll manipulate that white guilt. And it's almost like a shark – that smells blood. Once the shark smells blood, oh, it's going in. And once it has that power, that moral power. And so critical race theory is about attributing moral guilt to all quote unquote white people um, in such a way um, that all quote unquote white people are white supremacists and racists because they have participated, according to critical race theory, in a society that's been set up to oppress and hold black, hold back black people and advance mm-hmm. uh, white people. Now, I'll give, I want to give the benefit of the doubt to the critical race theory. It notices race was invented with wicked intentions by Europeans and European Americans um, in order to uh, oppress uh, uh, the d- descendants from Africa. Uh, and advance mm-hmm. uh, the descendants of Europe. It, historically, true. that's true. But the problem with critical race theory, Chris, is it doesn't leave, it, it doesn't leave uh, that discussion. It doesn't leave that box. It actually racializes everything, right. just like the inventors of, of, of CRT. Yeah. Um, and so don't want to go get too, too um, off the deep end there. Um, but I think those are some of the, the broad brush strokes of critical race theory. Uh, and, you know, I, I know we're going to get into it, but worst of all, man, it, 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 it's crept into the church mm-hmm. and it's become Christianized and it's, it's brought in a false gospel. Um, and so it's a, it's a philosophy not according to Christ, Colossians right. 2 9, which I'd love to, to look at later. Oh, yeah, uh, if we have a chance, Colossians 2 8, rather. Yeah. So, man, you've been. Um a uh, pioneer in Christian hip hop for a while now, man. Um, um, and, and I'm sure you've seen this kind of this this what I'm about to mention. I'm sure you've seen it as well. Where people, man, um, early what like 20, 2012, 2011, even 2010, people were man. They were heavily reformed, man. Uh, a lot of the people who were uh, big in Christian rap were reformed rappers. And a lot of those same people have now kind of switched their focuses to to social justice or critical race theory, man. What, what, what do you what do you think has caused this shift, man, in in Christian rap? Yes, you know, on one level, brother Chris, I think it's an expression of and the fruit of the local church and the American church and even the broader Reformed church mm-hmm. moving away from the basic fundamentals of Christianity um, this in the centrality of the gospel. And so what's happening in the pulpit is going to start happening in the mic. Mm. Mm. Um, what, what's, what's happening uh, in conferences um, and in the Sunday school classroom is going to start happening with, with the pen and pad mm. for, 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 for rappers. Yeah. Um, so on one level, I think it's it's a manifestation of what's actually going on in the local church. On another level, since critical race theory is a critical theory that seeks to redefine um, redefine language, right? It seeks to deconstruct everything, uh, and since it racializes everything, and it has made it out as if racism, in terms of the way that the Lord. I would say the way that the Lord really puts it is is partiality, mm-hmm. where you're you're putting up one person above another based on on something in them instead of being impartial like like him and being just. Um, so racism is is, is partiality. Um, critical race theory makes it out that race based sin was invented by Europeans, mm-hmm. which is which is crazy. 
Um, I mean, you you just you can even look in the scriptures and right. see people mistreating one another because of their ethnicity or because of their 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 skin complexion. Mm-hmm. Um, it's quite likely Aaron and Mi- and Miriam did the same thing with with Moses Moses's wife, mm-hmm. and so the Lord sh- struck Miriam with white leprosy. Mm-hmm. Um, but even thinking of Arabs Arab slavery, mm-hmm. seventeen thousand. Uh, Africans were enslaved by Arabs uh, within, you know, beginning within about 50 to 100 years of when the Quran was written, uh, mm-hmm. as as Muhammad himself, um, according to uh, uh, Islamic writings that that give biographical sketches of his life and, and give quotes, uh, he himself w- had race-based racism, um, and in in slave in in slaves. Um, so to go back to your question, why have cats moved away from reform theology? Because if reform the- if the reformation happened in Europe, Chris, it's gotta be racist yeah. <laughs> according to the CRT cats. Yeah. And so they're all about, we got to decolonize, decolonize. Yeah. And yes, Europeans sinned horribly by colonizing Africa in other nations. And those sins will be paid for either in hell or on the cross. They were paid for. Um, but to then paint this picture as if uh, nothing good could come out of the Reformation, when if we think about what was the Reformation, it was all about getting back to Scripture. Mm -hmm. It was about getting back to the original languages of Greek and Hebrew, and it was about getting back to the centrality of the Gospel, the sovereignty of God's grace and salvation. So the five solas and the five points of Calvinism, you know, should I be skeptical, should should an African American be skeptical of them because the Lord used Europeans, it's just crazy, man. Yeah. And so I think a lot of it is that deconstruction um, and and ultimately beginning to buy into the world's mm. agendas and the world's ideologies. And Chris, I really think, man, people have allowed the media to paint narratives uh, of, of, of what injustice is right. um, and, and have bought into that. So... What, any thoughts on your end, Brother Chris, on why these shifts um, in the Reformed Church and in Christian hip-hop uh, um, and, and anything else about critical race theory uh, yeah. that you feel like our listeners need to know? Yeah, I, just kind of with the first part, I've definitely seen Christian hip-hop um, in the last 10 years, this desire to kind of be trendy, you know, when a difference, you know, when, uh, you know, trap first came into the scene everybody wanted to make trap christian hip-hop you know when uh then you know when lyrical theology is hot everybody want to do lyrical theology and now we're in the the social justice age now everybody want to want to do social justice songs you know so for me like it like you like you just stated man it's man we want to chh it's almost like we want to have our um approval from the world so bad like no we're not corny you know we we can rap good like (laughs) y'all and so for me that's very very problematic and um and like you said uh a lot of the issues too with critical race theory too you know with you know with reform man we we know how influential the reformation was and um i know people who when they became reformed man you see the eyes you know you see the passion and people would say not, not even you know the the doctrine itself but even you know how you look at the scriptures is is this um racist it's like before you even get to the the doctrines they're already complaining about the hermeneutic you use is is whiteness or it's european or r- rather than you know you you're just exegeting the text you, you know you you don't yeah. care who said it but hey this is what the bible teaches and great point it's it's really to me that's very frustrating because we can't even get to the truth of God's word before you've already deemed me guilty. You know? Right. Great point. And you know what's crazy about that, Chris? Yeah. If I'm reading the text through the lens of whiteness, what lens are you reading it through? <laughs> right. <laughs> it, are you reading, is reading the text through blackness mm. any less sinful? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and so it goes back to the assumption. The assumption is that European descendants 
um, are in some way, it's almost as if, it's almost as if ag- acknowledging that there's a, as a total depravity that's worse. Mm. Um, but at the end of the day, what is the scriptures and inter- what is the scriptures hermeneutic? What's Jesus's hermeneutic? Yeah. Luke 24. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the law, the, Mo- the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms are all about him and his death and resurrection. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> um, Christ says it's all about him. I don't care if, if you're white, black, blue, green, or yellow, the, the scriptures are about Christ mm. and his blood was red. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, and it washes sinners. And, and at the end of the day, that's what it's got to still be all about, bro. And that's one of the most disheartening, I think, most destructive aspects of critical race theory is it's, it's, it's moving us away from the simplicity and the centrality of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Yeah. Brother Chris, I want to look at Colossians 2 yes. real quick. Please do. Um, I, I'm just struck um, by what Paul says in Colossians 2 where— um, he prays in Colossians 2, uh, verse 2, that the, the hearts of God's people would be encouraged. How? By being knit together in love. And here's the goal, to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, Christ mm-hmm. himself. In whom, that is in Christ, in him, are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So, even before we get to the to verse 8, Paul is saying, yo, don't look outside of Christ for true wisdom and knowledge. And notice in verse 4, I say this in order that no one may delude you, that no one may deceive you with plausible arguments. And Chris, Mm. critical race theory is plausible Mm -hmm. because we have a real stay in history Mm -hmm. in America, and racism does still exist from um, all different kinds of of people. Um, And so these arguments sound plausible, but then Paul goes on in verse 6 to encourage God's people that in the same way you receive Christ the Lord, so continue to walk in him by being rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. By the way, people who are caught up in critical theories, Chris, they don't sound very thankful. Mm, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They don't sound very grateful uh, because— you are no longer praising Christ for taking the wrath of God for you. Justice is all about, Lord, get them. <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, now. Get them now. Not even wait for the final judgment. Right. In fact, Lord, if you ain't going to get them, we are. Right. <laughs> um, you know, but the, the Christian, the, 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 the born again believer says, Lord, I can't believe that a wicked sinner like me Call, can call you father. Mm. And when it, the, the most important aspect of justice is that I deserve your judgment forever in hell. It was poured out on Christ for me on the cross. And by faith in Christ, you count me righteous. Mm. And now I'm justified. Yeah. Now help me uh, to live justly, Lord. Um, but notice what Paul says in verse 8. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and, and this word and, I think it's breaking down what the philosophy is, namely, empty deceit. According to human tradition, so this isn't from the Lord, it's, mm-hmm. it's human tradition, mm-hmm. according to the elemental spirits of the world, and, and that phrase is very interesting for Paul, it, it can have to do with demonic uh, influences, or, or either way, worldly ways, and not according to Christ. Mm-hmm. And so Paul is concerned that the Colossians in their day, just as they were being tempted to be led astray by philosophies not according to Christ philosophies. So that is my my concern, Brother Chris. Yeah. And then notice he goes on in verse 9, 10, 11, and 12, and it's just all about Christ. Yeah. Instead, in him, in Christ, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. Mm. You've been filled in him. Verse 10, in him you are circumcised with circumcision. Verse 12, you've been buried in baptism with him. You were raised by faith in him. Uh, Verse 13, you were dead in your trespasses, but God made us alive together with him, having forgiven all our sins. He canceled the debt of of our sin. He disarmed the demonic rulers, verse 15, uh, and and so on. 
And so you can see how the, the not according to Christ philosophy is really contrasted with the truth of the gospel. Mm. And so I, I got into a little bit of preachy, preachy mode no. there, bro. But. Hey, that's, that's what I want to get to, man. I'm, I'm reminded, you know, when you were in, in verse 8, what Paul says in Galatians 1, you know, about if even if we or an angel from heaven, you know, comes preaching contrary you know, to, to what has been taught, let, let them be accursed, you know. Um, it's yes. it's it's all about you know what what God has revealed in the gospel, you know. That's right. Um, man, you wrote a a blog, man, that I was very encouraged by. Uh, letter to my friends, um, and I couldn't just help but uh, think of your old song, uh, "Letter to My Friends." Where man, I saw a lot of similarities. Where you know when before you became a Christian, you had you were in uh, rap, uh, worldly rap. And you, you left and you wrote this song, Letter to My Friends. And I couldn't help but feel like you were saying kind of similar stuff. Like I was kind of in critical race theory thought. And now I'm writing this letter to my friends like I'm leaving, you know. Um, what's, been, what's been the response to that blog? You know, it's been very encouraging, actually, Chris. Amen. Um. I I think one of the main reasons I was easily led astray by this deceptive philosophy was out of my own white guilt, mm -hmm. which, by the way, Chris, I'm not so sure it was even real guilt in the eyes of God in terms of, you know, when we talk about guilt, there's subjective guilt where you just feel guilty, right. but it, according to scripture, in the the Hebrew word for iniquity, um, and in is the concept of true guilt in, in God's record book, right. wow. <laughs> the thing that God will judge people for on the last day if they're not in Christ, or that which He laid on Jesus on the cross. And so, how much of that was actually real guilt, um, you know? But Chris, I think fear of man had me gripped bro mm. because to be honest growing up in hip-hop growing up in uh, african-american culture and in hip-hop culture um going to school i wanted to be the cool white kid i wanted all the black kids at school to, to like me um and i succeeded pretty well to make it happen mm -hmm. you know and eventually it, it, it just kind of came natural um, but so God forbid I, anybody think that I'm a racist. And if you don't go along with this, if you don't own up to your race, you know, if you don't own up to your white privilege, if you don't own up to your own participation in systemic racism, even if you haven't done racist acts, the fact that you're just white, even though you, I didn't ask to be labeled white, you're right? you know? Um, are you, are, do you, are you labeling me as white? Um, you, you, you are guilty. Mm -hmm. And so unless you own up to it and renounce, renounce it, you know, and so fear of man was huge for me. Mm. Um, and, and I can even think going back and I talk about this on the letter to my friend's blog. I can, I think going back, you know, to elementary and middle school, when I would get picked on by African Americans and be called even racist racial slurs, um, I I just felt like I deserved it, man. Hmm. Um, and I really wanted to be accepted. And again, I knew there was real racism history in our, in our country, and then uh, even in the present, real instances of, of ongoing racism, although I wouldn't call it systemic racism like it, like it was. Um, and so it was very easy to trap Tim Brindle into uh, the critical race theory ideology. Right. And then what is the answer? You not only have to renounce, I not only had to renounce my, my whiteness um, and own up to white, my um, white privilege but I now have to educate others mm. and help them see their 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 white privilege. Yeah. Um, that that's it's basically the the gospel of, of critical race theory. Yeah. But there actually is no real forgiveness. Mm -hmm. There's actually no real atonement. Um, 
and it's mad works, man. Mm. And it was just a, a, a burden. Um, and I'm just grateful. It's crazy. My, you know, the Lord used my wife who, who would be labeled as black, um, who is, um, an African immigrant who grew up in the U S she, the Lord used her to help me see that I was on this treadmill mm. of, of, of works based, um, religion. And I had been carrying around this burden of, of white guilt. And, and I was in a system where there was no real forgiveness and, and atonement. The cross wasn't enough again, even if there was real guilt. Mm. So, the letter to my friends is alluding back to the song that I wrote um, in 2002, 2001, 2002, which came out in 2003 on the Great Awakening Project. And the real idea behind the title was I knew a lot of people had already canceled me and labeled me as white supremacist mm-hmm. and racist um, because I am uh, denying the critical race theory a paradigm of systemic racism. I do not believe that um, American society is set up to hold back people of color in mm-hmm. an all-pervasive, all-encompassing reality. Right. Um, and because you know, once you say that, canceled. <laughs> um, and so I knew I wasn't going to reach um, many folks who. They don't really care about your reasoning. They don't even really care about the facts. Again, many folks, Chris, they're just buying into the ideology and the buzzwords and the catchphrases, not even realizing, you know, not even going upstream and finding what's the source, what's the lake it's coming from. Wow, this is from an unbiblical worldview that denies creation, denies that that God is the creator hmm. uh, of all things, denies the goodness of image of God, um, denies there's actually one a human race created by God mm-hmm. with different tribes, tongues, and nations, and denies the, the fact that only the gospel downstream from. Um, but I, I knew I wasn't going to reach those cats, Chris. And so th- the letter to my friends was for the people who will listen, mm-hmm. my friends, some who I know closely and dearly, um, and some who I don't know, but are still willing to listen. That was what was really behind the title. It was for you guys who are willing to check out my, my reasoning here. Here's, here's why I stand. Um, this is, this is where I stand here. I stand as Luther said. Yeah. Um, so yeah, does that answer your question? Oh, no, absolutely. It does. Um, you, we'd be kind of talking about white privilege. So let's, let's get into that. Um, because, one of one of the things that I find so kind of um, it, it's it's a system that re- you know we're talking about critical race theory, white privilege. It's a system that really sets sets you up for I mean, damned if you do, damned if you don't, because you know, um, right. you, you know, we're talking about if you preach critical race theory, if you you go against critical race theory, you're you're a white supremacist. If you preach right. it, you're still a critical race theory. So there's no escaping. The uh, the right. the label of white supremacy and also uh, white privilege because no matter how much money you make, uh, the, your upbringing, um, your actual uh, charity to to black people, you're still privileged. So you know you, you, you right. maybe maybe you can go in on that. Yes. So yes, the the critical race theory assumes white privilege. Right. Um, and and the assumption is based on um, the 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 construct of race was set up to privilege white people, um, and so I think you could say white privilege existed in 1780. Uh, white privilege existed in 1880. Mm-hmm. Did white privilege exist in 1980 when Tim Brenda was born? That's where it gets tricky. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, I think it's pretty clear the answer is no, um, because at this point in America's history, there is equal rights. Mm-hmm. And so what the critical race theory demand, the, the, the critical race theorists demand, though, is, is, is equal outcome. You're right not necessarily equal opportunity. Mm-hmm. But Chris, if you think about it in the kingdom of God, 
the kingdom of God is actually about equal opportunity. The Lord Jesus Christ makes quite clear that there are various levels of rewards that believers will get. And the rewards are according to our works. Now, we are saved by faith uh, through grace alone and Christ alone. And on that level, there is equal outcome because it's based on Christ's merits. Right. That's the gospel. And that's grace. Right. Right. <laughs> that's the gospel of grace. Um, uh, but when it comes to believers uh, and their rewards and glory, it is actually based on uh, it's based on works. And there, there is, so there is an equal opportunity um, but there is not necessarily an equal outcome. Um, but the, the, the critical race theory demands the equal outcome. And it, it, it assumes that a, a, a quote-unquote white person is way ahead in the, in the race, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the marathon right. uh, to success. But you know what that also – it assumes that the African-American is, is less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is is less intelligent yeah. is less um, able um, to succeed uh, and so Chris man I just think it's striking that Nigerian Americans mm, mm. have a higher income on average than white Americans mm -hmm. and other people of color in particular are outdoing white people in, in terms of, of average income, in terms of education, in, in academic success, and so on. And this is just material. We're just talking about materially, materially here. Right. Um, and then not to mention, if we really look carefully at the disparity between uh, those who succeed economically and those who don't, is the issue really race? Yeah. Or is the issue other factors such as having children in wedlock mm -hmm. and staying married um, and, and pursuing education and having education and, 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 and working hard and ultimately living off of biblical, uh, biblically-based principles. Right. So, Chris, I think that's where there's the real disparity. Um, and so an African-American who uh, works hard and does well in school and um, – and pursues uh, wise principles, they can outdo uh, a, a quote-unquote white person or European-American who lives foolishly. Right. That's what's going to happen. Right. Um, and so I, I think, again, the critical race theory and the white privilege thing, it attempts to overlay the real systemic racism that existed pre-civil rights, and it tries to um, make that the reality today yeah. and explain away all any kind of disparities with race. Mm. Chris, at the end of the day, man, I think white privilege is, is whack because biblically speaking, how are we looking at privilege? Mm. Because the way that we talk about uh, privilege, the scripture speaks in that language in terms of benefits and blessings mm -hmm. that are ours in Christ. Mm -hmm. In Christ is every single spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. If you're an African American or an Irish American, or if you're a Jamaican, or you're a Chinese, or if you're an Indian, or if you're a Brazilian and you're in Christ, or if, or if you're Jewish or Greek and you're in Christ, you have been elected, you have atonement, you have propitiation, you have justification, you have sanctification, you have adoption, you get suffering. And that's the other thing. Don't think that white Christians aren't going to suffer. The Lord will make sure all of us are conformed to the image of Christ in terms of his suffering, Amen. being conformed to his suffering. It says in Philippians 3. Uh, and so, and best of all, we get Christ. Amen. We all We get Christ himself. And so... It, it even begins to cause Christians to start looking at privilege in a worldly way, yeah. uh, in, in, in a materialistic way. And this is its Marx's roots, because Marx was a materialist. Karl Marx didn't even believe in the spiritual realm. And of course, the classical Marxism became cultural Marxism 
uh, which are the are you know the early seeds of the critical theories. So, Chris, that's that's a long answer, man. No. Um, any anything to add to that? No, I, I think that's uh, I think that's great. One of the, one of the things I've observed, we were talking about covenant theology before we got on, and one of the things, man, I've I've, I've kind of kind of seen just because my mind's been in that frame of thinking, just you know, when it comes to federal headship, that you know, you you have you have you have this white person they'll say that is in Christ, but yet also what in Adam or in their forefathers, and so though they're justified, there's also this other guilt hanging to them. And so, right. I mean, to me, it's these contradictory uh, ideologies being placed together. You know, H have you kind of yes. seen that kind of same framework as well? Yes. And people are trying to hijack covenant theology mm. to try to make this fit, Chris. Yeah. And it's, it's a pseudo-covenantal theology, man. And it is a pseudo face fake false federalism but the way scripture puts it you're either in christ or you're in adam and if you're in christ um alongside of uh any other brother or sister of a different eth eth ethnicity or nationality or or or, ba or background you you are both justified mm -hmm. you're the power of sin has been set free that's the other thing that's so whack about critical race theory Brother Chris, is it not only denies justification, it denies sanctification. Mm. Because remember, sanctification is not just progressive, where we're being made like Christ daily. That is there. Mm -hmm. But wrote, Paul goes in on Romans 6 on definitive sanctification, mm -hmm. the fact that the power of sin has really been broken in, the, in, in believers' lives. Sin does not reign. Um, and so if we're going to label our brother or sister in Christ as racist, period, we're saying they're still enslaved to sin and we're denying, we're, it's, it's, really, it's really an attack against the Lord, bro. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, let's use more of that covenant theology language, you know, um, where, man, it seems like this, this system of critical race theory is, is a covenant of works where um, the way man is kind of made right in the image of blackness or black people is by... Uh, activism or becoming woke or giving up privilege so man it's it, it's a dangerous like we're talking you're talking about a pseudo covenant theology it's, it's dangerous when yes. you when you get into to things like that because obviously um the covenant of works cannot save a man he cannot make him right um it's the it's right. all about the covenant of grace you know you're right bro and then if if that's true if the white person is true is trapped in a covenant of works. What about the the, the African American? What, what kind of covenant are, are they not in a covenant of grace? Yeah. Or are they right? Based are they justified by race? Right. It's as the, opposed to it, by grace. It, it would be the same error that many of the Pharisees made that they thought they were right with God on bloodline. <laughs> you know, bro. <laughs> no wonder certain. People are going into Hebrew Israelite. Yeah, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm seeing it's, it. It's, it's, it's not that far off. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it really isn't. There's many, many similarities, man. Yeah. And so it's, it makes sense. Um, and then the other thing, Chris, if cats don't go down the Hebrew Israelite false teaching, which for our listeners who are not familiar, Hebrew Israelite puts a big emphasis on ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and makes it out that uh, the, the, the lost tribes of Israel or, or true Israel are the, the, the black or African people. Mm -hmm. um, when scripture is so clear that if Christ is the, he's the offspring of Abraham, Genesis, uh, Galatians 3.16. Yeah. He's the offspring of the woman, Genesis 3.15, he's the offspring of Abraham. Genesis 22, he's the offspring of David. 2 Samuel 7, Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. Galatians 3.16, Christ is the offspring of Abraham. Mm. And if you are in Christ, you are heirs of you are heirs of God's promises. You are Abraham's offspring. Yeah. You are, the, tr says, you are the true Israel. <laughs> That's right. And so that's the context of there is no Jew or Greek or male or female or slave or free. Amen.
That's the context, the oneness we have in Christ. It's all about union with Christ. And so the Hebrew Israelite denies um, the glorious story of redemption where the nations at Babel and Genesis 11 mm. are scattered. And, they, and humanity was one race at that uh, They still are one race. Right. But the Lord actually says that in Genesis 11, they are one people, one Am in Hebrew, one Genos in the Greek Old Testament, one race. You know, but they're building this idolatrous tower. The Lord scatters their languages. And Genesis 10 makes clear it's according to their tribes, tongues, and nations. And then in Daniel 7, we see the different tribes, tongues, and nations worshiping the Son of Man. And that's who's gathered around the throne Amen. in Revelation 5 and Revelation 7. It's the gospel yeah. that brings us back together. But, Brother Chris, the other thing is, I was going to say, if it isn't Hebrew-Israelite false teaching that CRT will take you to, Bro, it's tied up in the intersectionality mm. with feminism mm. and with homosexuality. Mm. And so that's why so many people who are down with CRT are, are very much playing with feminism and homosexuality. Mm. Yeah. It, it, because it's a part of the same framework. It's a part of the same intersectionality critical theory framework. Right. Absolutely. Um, I... I, I, we we kind of been talking about it already, but um, doesn't it seem there there's a redefinition of, of biblical terms and um, categories, kind of like um, you know the historical definition of racism has kind of been added onto um, things like repentance or or sin has been uh, you know the definition has been changed and 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 things like salvation. What 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 would you make of that? How 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 have you seen that? Bro, that's a great observation, and it goes back to cultural Marxism, mm. because Marx, Karl Marx's ideas of classical Marxism, where he noticed the oppressor class and the oppressed class, and, and he wanted to see a change in that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Gramsci and also um, uh, other schools of thought took these things. And uh, they they made it made it into cultural Marxism, where they saw, wow, there's power in knowledge, and there's power in ideas. There's, and so let's change the ideas, let's change concepts, let's deconstruct language. Mm. And so in its history, critical theory in its early stages was all about changing concepts and, and deconstructing language. Mm. And so it makes sense that there's a redefinition of racism, a redefinition of justice, a redefinition of, you know, fill in the blank. But that's why we have to let scripture's definitions stand. We have to let the scriptures tell us what is biblical justice. Mm -hmm. And according to the Lord in Leviticus 19.15, he says, you shall not do injustice or evil in court, literally in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness you shall judge your neighbor. Mm. And so again, biblical justice, it's fair dealings mm -hmm. with your neighbor. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not having false scales. It's not um, taking advantage of or uh, abusing or making... Um, a uh, 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 false testimony in court. It's it's not having partiality, preferring one over the other. And so the Lord, he's the ultimate impartial judge. Uh, biblical justice is is actually dealing with your, 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 your fellow man who's created in the image of God, seeing them as that and dealing with them justly in that you are not partial to them. Yeah. What's crazy is critical race theory, it's, it's very partial. <laughs> It's very partial. Um, it's 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 completely partial t against certain people or, or races, um, and 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 it defers to others. Right. And so Leviticus nineteen fifteen, um, I, I just don't see how critical race theory um, and believers who who are down with critical race theory can get there when you look at a passage like Leviticus nineteen fifteen. Anything else to say about? about biblical justice brother Chris. yeah no totally um it, it you know we have to first we have to define 
justice according to God's law. We can't appeal to other things, uh, uh, so sociology. We can't appeal to all these, you know, secularists on what justice is, like Robin DiAngelo. She she doesn't determine what justice is. God's word right. does. God himself, no. you know. And so, yeah, that's what I would ultimately appeal to and encourage Christians that, you know, it has to be defined by God's word. Um, l right. Let's uh, let's get practical, man. Let's get practical and personal, man. Um, you, like me, yes. are in, in a interracial marriage. Um, uh, how, how do you think critical race theory, uh, all these things we've been talking about, man, affects these interracial uh, Christian marriages? Yeah. Bro, critical race theory can be toxic mm. for an interracial marriage. At first, it really was for my wife, Floriana, and I. Um, because it pits spouses, it, pit, it pits a spouse of one race over against a spouse of another race. For instance, when one spouse sees the other as a victim who always needs help. Mm. And then when one, one spouse sees themselves as privileged or the other spouse sees the other spouse as more privileged. You know, when, um, when one spouse sins against another spouse and the assumption is it's, 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 it's because of racism. It's racism. You know, the CRT lens, if that's how you're looking at your spouse, it's, that's, that's how uh, it, it's going to be, man. Mm. And there was, a, there was a season, I'm glad it didn't last that long, where that was the dynamic of our marriage at times, mm. where, um, you know, seeing my wife as, a, as if she's a, a victim, and when I saw myself as more privileged, mm. um, and she noticed me just plagued with guilt. Mm. Um, but bro... At the end of the day, being brought back to the Lord's word, I think what really struck my wife was when there was the call for the exodus out of the white evangelical church. Mm. And it began to hit, hit my wife like, wow, how, how can I stay? According to the, these folks, how can I stay in my marriage? Mm. Yeah. Should I leave my marriage? Yeah. What, but what God has brought together, let no man you know, uh, tear apart. Amen. Wait a second, Lord. Um, and it, it took us back to the scriptures again, and it, it caused us to, again, it's very basic, very basic uh, biblical understanding is both of us are created in the image of God with dignity and honor um, in, in, in beauty, according to our creator. But because of the fall, also, both of us are equally sinful, equally able to have prejudice, equally able to be partial both have stereotypes and generalizations, but then with the good news of the gospel, we're both infinitely loved by God the Father, mm. chosen from the foundation of the world. We are equally in Christ. And then when we began to remember looking at each other in Christ, that's our identity. That is probably the worst part of CRT, mm. Brother Chris, is it causes you identity politics. We don't need identity politics. We need identity theology. Amen. We need to see one another as the Lord sees us in Christ, those who are forgiven, declared righteous and not guilty, those who are children of God, sons and daughters of the Father, those who are set free from sin, sin no longer reigns over us, those who are alive to God, those who are a kingdom of priests, we are his chosen race, the church, all of us in Christ, we're his one new messianic race, um, his new humanity and the new Adam. And so that the Lord, man, I gotta, I, I praise him for my wife, man. Amen. This white man, the Lord used my black wife mm. to help me um, get free of yeah. of white guilt and 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 CRT, man. Yeah, and and. and so yeah, and not even mentioning getting to children. Yeah. Um, but but I'd love to hear your testimony, brother Chris, or or how it's been for you and your wife. Yeah, uh, I guess get, get into one of your points because I would see critical race theories especially damaging for for white husbands because right you are to be this this prophet priest king in the home this leader uh, as God calls you to lead and yet you can't because you're plagued by guilt. 
um, you, you, you know, to man, I, I just see that dynamic as that would be a real struggle. But as far as for me and my wife, uh, you're, you're right, bro, because the critical yeah. theory is all about the power. Yeah. And so, yo, you're abusing your power. Yep. You, you know, by being, by the way, the critical theory is very critical of male headship. Yeah, Christian marriage. <laughs> yeah, and namely the Bible. Yeah, yeah cr- Christian marriage, mm-hmm. because the 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 patriarch the the biblical patriarchy, and yes, men have oppressed women, and they need to repent of that. Mm-hmm. But but at the end of the day, um, the the biblical model, man, it, it must stand. But yeah, continue, bro. That that was a great point. Yeah, you made, man. Um, man. As far as um, there was a, there was a point in time early in my early in my uh, Christian walk, probably early in our Christian marriage, where I was kind of on the fence on some of these things. I, I wasn't outspoken. I wasn't, you know, on anything like that. But, um, man, I, I'm, I'm honestly just really, really blessed to have a, a submissive wife. Um, a, a, a lot of these things didn't... Um, man, it was just by God's grace. It really did not just because I was not overt in a lot of this stuff, um, that it really didn't just affect the marriage, um, totally because of God's grace. But I remember, um, when I first started kind of becoming aware of some of this kind of stuff, man, I I knew how damaging it it could get. Um, and so I, as the, you know, the leader of our home, you know, knew I had to uh, change that direction because I know how easy I know how I can influence my wife because my wife she trusts me um, and I know if I'm t- teaching her something she's willing to believe it because she she trusts you know the the uh, authority you know in the home that I have and so because I knew that um, I was like wow yeah we we really need to you know, changes. And so I just started teaching her more of this stuff and showing her, you know, how sinful it is. And, uh, man, it was just, I I, I think it's a blessing, a blessing to her knowing she doesn't have to walk around guilty. Um, cause I, I couldn't imagine it even from, uh, her perspective, right. Her having to, to submit and yet being plagued by white guilt all the time. Like right. e- even in the stuff where she may be right, she just may be feeling guilty because of white guilt. And, I mean, man, True. how 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 much would that cause me to even be more abusive in the relationship in that dynamic? Exactly. You know, great point, um, bro. One of the great point, man. I hope you don't mind if I if I read read a text, man. But one, go for it, man. One of the texts that really helped me in all this was Ephesians two, um, mm. st- starting at verse eleven, um, where where Paul, you know, confronts the one of the one of the greatest uh, ethnic divides in history with uh, of Jew and Gentile. And man, he, he, he says some remarkable things that I think goes at the face of a lot of the woke ideology. Um, he says, right. therefore, remember that at one time, you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember, that you were at one time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of the Christ. Uh, for he himself yes. is our peace who has made us, yes. he's made us both one and has broken down right. in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility, man. That's that's what it's all about. How yes. the blood of Christ is what. Funny enough, man. I, I had this thought the other day, man. If critical race theory is is true, let right. Let's play pre- presuppositional for a second. If what the woke yes. crowd is saying is true, they should preach the gospel more than anybody, according to this text, because that is what actually brings peace. But right. All, you know, uh, you know that would conflict with the system of uh, perpetually having mm. guilt and 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 things like that, man. So, man, this this text, man, I constantly go to for reminder of things like, like man. that. That's so dope, bro. Yeah, man. It, it, and at the end of the day, the gospel is sufficient. Yeah, man. It, it has been, 
The gospel has been sufficient. You could say for the last 2,000 years, but the gospel was in the Old Testament Amen. too. Amen. <laughs> Abraham, Moses, yeah. David, even going back farther, you know, uh, Abel, mm. um, justified by faith. Amen. Um, Noah. So the gospel has been sufficient for several thousand years. Let's we don't it, we don't need to, to it, it needs no supplements. Mm. There, 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 it doesn't need anything else, especially not a philosophy, not according to Christ. Yeah. Amen to that, bro. Amen. Well put, yeah. brother Chris. One last question for you, man. Um, man, what's the what's the solution to to people who've embraced uh, critical race theory, uh, kind of this woke gospel? What would you tell this person who's who's um, on the fence even, um, how would you counsel this person? Yeah. You know, I'm going to say something really, really profound here, Brother Chris, that people are probably going to be surprised by. And it, it might sound a little complex and weighty, but you know what I tell them? Mm. Read the Bible. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though. Seriously. That's what you just did, Chris. Yeah. Seriously. Bro. I would just encourage, I would encourage our listeners to take every thought captive to the Lord Jesus Christ and make sure that um, the assumptions are lined up with Scripture. Um, I would ask, is the blood of Christ enough? Mm. And has Christ set his people free? Yeah. Um, are, are you looking at yourself or are you looking at your brother and sister uh, in, through, their, through our identity in Christ? It's all about union with Christ. Amen. In him, in him, mm. in him, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in the Lord, in the Lord, through him, through him. Hundreds of times, especially in Paul's letters, he uses phrases about our union with Christ. Because what God does when, when he gives us faith by the Spirit and he unites us to Jesus, he joins us to Christ. And so that our identity is now bound up in him. Mm. And when the Father sees us, he sees us in Christ so everything that Christ has accomplished is ours. Amen. All benefits and privileges are ours in him. And so I would just really encourage uh, Christians to uh, continue to, to stay focused to the centrality of our union with Christ. Amen. Uh, and, and then, Brother Chris, we can actually confront real racism yeah. when it happens. Yeah. When it happens. Right. Now— <laughs> Robin D'Angelo says assumes racism at all times. Uh, if you're in the critical race theory, you will always only see racism. Mm -hmm. But if but love, according to First Corinthians 13, believes all things and hopes all things. When you look at your brother or sister in, who is in Christ, do you assume evil of them mm. or? If they have God's spirit, you should uh, give them the benefit of the doubt that the Lord is working in them. Amen. And so I would uh, just really want to bring us back to the word, bro. Right. And um, in the meantime, I think there's some very provocative films. Um, they will not get to the gospel issue, but I think they can begin to start causing people to question um, the, the narrative of mainstream media, um, in terms of systemic racism. So I would recommend a movie called what killed Michael Brown, mm. what killed Michael Brown, uh, was put out by Shelby Steele in the last couple months. And it's just outstanding in the way that, um, it, it looks carefully at American history and even up to the present in the way that the media has taken these various events in particular, um, some of the police shootings, and really use them to paint a narrative of, of systemic racism and really taking an advantage of white guilt yeah. uh, to pass this, the, these agendas. Um, um, so that would be something that uh, more on the political level, but at the end of the day, it's the scriptures. I recommend Owen Strachan's videos on uh, wokeness and Christianity are outstanding. In that book right there, bro. <laughs> Got your copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By what yeah, standard? I, I hear. That. Yeah, man. Hey, man. That's it. They, they kill it. They go in. And, bro, Vody is working on another one. Yes. So yeah. it's really going to shake up the league. Hey, Amen. 
no doubt. Um, and so Vody Bauckham is very helpful on this. And what's crazy, Chris, is Vody, man, years ago, yes, he was, he was, he was talking about this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, it's it's crazy. It's causing a cessationist like myself to wonder, man, maybe <laughs> I should start to. <laughs> no, just kidding. But, but there's nothing new under the sun, man. Yeah. At the end of the day, there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. And so Vody was noticing trends and in, in, in ideologies and so on. So. Yeah, most definitely. Anything to add to that, resource-wise, brother? Chris? Yeah, um, like like you you mentioned uh, just the political film that it, like I said, it doesn't really get into the gospel stuff. But Uncle Tom, man, was very excellent. Just kind of showing how yes. um, it's always liberals that want to quiet black conservatives, man. Um, and 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 I think there's this pressure from black conservatives, um, man, for a while, like just to keep silent because you know you nobody wants to get called Uncle Tom, nobody wants to get called Coon, and all these derogatory racial uh, epithets, you know, that are being said, um, and so. For, for me, that's how I felt for a long time where I just still try to stay in the woke movement, you know, uh, because, man, I didn't want to. I already knew what it meant, you know, um, yeah. and, and you talked about, you know, the same kind of pressure. Um, there There is this pressure, yeah. man. And, and so I definitely want to encourage people who who are, um, uh, you know. Feeling that weight, man. It's, it's freedom in Christ, man. I know you talked about that, man. It's, yes. Man, I'm, I'm, I, I feel free to just speak the truth, you know, yes. you know, and uh, uh, maybe a, a resource just for um, other Christian men. I'm definitely working on more stuff, um, and I definitely would encourage people, hey, to keep checking out the channel um, because, man, I, 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 do, I do think this is something that needs to be attacked, um, and so right. I definitely want to encourage people to keep uh you know listening and and, and and to stay near to the cross man that's ultimately what it's about that that's yes. the that's the greatest resource i think we would agree that would will, will help yes. people man god's word man um yeah. if you don't subscribe to my channel that's fine but hey uh right. read the bible like you said man the bible man. go to the bible yeah you don't need intersectionality you need the cross, Amen. that intersection. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Praise man, I just want to... Our sin debt was canceled. Yeah. Get canceled for Christ. Amen. Who, was canceled, who, got, who, who had your sin debt canceled on himself. Amen. Amen. But, Chris, this has been a great blessing for me, bro. Amen. Great fellowship with you here. Yeah, man. I just want to thank you for, for coming on. And, hey, Lord willing, we can we can do some more stuff. Uh, I know we have some uh, mutual interest as far as theology goes. And so... Man, Lord willing, we can yeah. keep chopping it up, man. Thank you for coming on, man. Would love to, bro. Maybe we can get into a biblical theology of race. Uh, uh, we kind of did already. A biblical theology of God's one covenant people from every tribe, tongue, and nation. That's what. That's the whole story of the Bible, man. The way that Christ brings the scattered nations back to himself uh, in, in union with him and to the Father. So, Amen. hallelujah. Amen.